What's up Jeepers? It's been a little while since we did a wiring harness video, so let's get into it. This is your coils, auto shutdown relay, and related wiring. Wiring harness 101, let's dig in. Let's take a minute and look at the auto shutdown relay. Okay, you're going to open your fuse box. You're going to go to your legend. Now, if you follow your legend down, you're going to see a diagram of the relays that are contained inside the fuse box. There's going to be a row of two with some microfuses next to it. And just below that, there's going to be a row of four of the compact relays. Now, your far right-hand side is going to be your automatic shutdown relay, as labeled ASD. Now, let's not get confused about things. Your automatic shutdown relay, the trigger comes from your power control module, which is right here. This very far, as you're standing looking at it, it's going to be on the left-hand side. This is part of your Jeep's existing wiring harness. That wire is already contained that turns on this relay in here. Okay, now your coil wires on here are going to be 86 and 85 are your pin numbers. They will always be the same on every electric relay, 12 volt relay, they never change. So your PCM is going to supply the negative to the coil on this automatic shutdown relay. That automatic shutdown relay, your 86 terminal is going to have battery positive. Your 85 terminal is going to run back to the PCM. You don't need to mess with that. Those are already there. Now, your 30, which is your constant hot, and your 87 pin, which is your switched output, that switched output is going to be a dark green wire with an orange stripe. Now you can verify this with a digital volt ohm meter by plugging your meter into the 87 terminal with this relay removed and then taking the other end of your test leads to this connector right here. Okay, now you're going to see a wire that is dark green with an orange tracer right there. Now that's going to be your wire that powers your coils and your injectors. That's going to supply the power. The PCM is then in, in turn going to supply a 12 volt negative to fire those devices. Now, just a note Jeep and Dodge label things differently. On Dodge, this would be C1. C2, C3. On Jeep, it's going to be C1, C2, C3. Ignore that. They're just engineers labeling. This plug will always fit this position, whether you're using a Jeep PCM or a Dodge PCM. The other two you're going to use to build your wiring harness. So in building your wiring harness, it's best to have the PCM in place on the firewall, the engine mocked up in the engine bay. At this point, ignore all of your wiring that goes to your power distribution center, which is your fuse box. Okay, because all of the, anything you need there is going to run from this C1 Jeep plug to here, and it's going to be pre-existing. Now, as I showed you in the video, here at the back of the engine, you're going to have a Thomas and Betts connector that's going to contain 
your dark green orange okay that dark green and orange is going to be your power your switched battery positive through a fuse block in the power distribution block that is going to power all of your coils and all of your injectors so once you've got the PCM in place, the engine in place, you're going to start one at a time. And you're going to come from the C, what Dodge calls the C1 plug, the number one wire, and you're going to take that across and over and route it down the engine to coil number three. You're going to go to the number three pin on C1. And you're going to take that to the number four coil. So you're going to route it across, bring it down to coil number four. You're going to take number five from the C1 to coil number six. You're going to take pin number seven to the number one coil. It's going to come all the way across and down to the number one coil. You're going to take position nine and you're going to take it to the number eight coil. It's going to be your shortest wire of the bunch. Route these in a manner so you can bundle them together. Loosely bundle them so that on the finish you can go ahead and bundle those up tight. Okay, then our next wire is going to be pin 21 from C1 and it is going to go over to coil number 5. Okay, now you're that you're finished with C1. C1 you have six wires. Okay, so we have two cylinders yet that haven't been addressed. Number 7 and number 2. So your number 7 wire on your C2, and these are microscopic, you're going to have to get some magnifying glasses when you're looking at these to make sure that you've got the right wire. It's going to come over here, and it's going to come over here to coil number 7. Then you're going to take pin number 9 from C2, and you're going to bring it all the way down here to coil number 2. That's got all of your coils addressed. Now, from this Molex, from, sorry, not the Molex, this is going to be a Thomas and Betts connector here. And this is going to be part of your engine harness that you've harvested from your, don from your dead engine. And you're going to locate that green with an orange trace. And you're going to come off of here and you're going to split. And you're going to go to cylinder 8, 6, 4, 2. And then you're going to split and you're going to come over here and you're going to go to 7, 5, 3, and 1. But you're not done. Okay, in between all of these, leave another tail sticking out to provide your power for each of your injectors because your injectors also derive their battery positive from the 87 pin. Excuse me, we've got construction trucks going by. From the 87 pin of auto shutdown relay which again you'll pick up that wire over here and that's where we're going to wrap it up for today hopefully this was helpful and we'll uh, give you some more here in a little while thanks for watching and don't forget to get in our on our giveaway for the uh, Badlands Apex 12,000 pound winch see ya